uh, to myself. Uh, but there's things that has happened that, like injury wise, that's just been wild to me. Like I don't get. Um, and I got it. I, blessings to him. I stayed in touch with him as well, just to kind of see how he's getting on. He he's not only has he made a full recovery, he's already had two. Uh, like a year later, he's had two MMA fights back. Um, he's, he won his first one back, uh, and I think he just lost his second one. Uh, but it was like decision, so like, but he's good. Um, so it's, it's good to see. How do you switch that emotion on and off? Because I know you're a very kind person, mm. you know, and you're a very humble person. But obviously in that ring, you've got to be, it's you or me. Yeah. And it's not going to be me. And and when you inflict that sort of pain and that sort of damage, how do you not sort of feel guilty about it? And you just said, just had to do what I do. And with that, that emotion, or do you feel that emotion? During, it's very difficult to, to be on both sides and be vicious and emotional. You have to pick a lane. It's very difficult. Otherwise, every time I land a punch, I'd be like, sorry, <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> like, is you couldn't do both at the same time. So, yeah, you, you have to pick a lane. And I think everybody, regardless of who they are outside, everybody has a fight persona. My fight persona is MVP. MVP is a very selfish person and he's in, going in there for, for, the, for the kill. Michael Page on the other side, like, you know, very different person. Both sides have aspects of each other, like a, um, uh, just a, what's the word I'm looking for? Like alter ego that is just coming out. And I, I and I always try to draw people down to people, like obviously a lot of people, especially in this country, into football. So if you watch football, I use like Wayne Rooney as an example, or even Paul Scholes, I'm a Man United supporter, so. Um, Paul Scholes, is, let me use Paul Scholes because everybody talks about how vicious this man was. Ronnie, he's trying to take off your legs. Uh, Patrice Evra tells a story about him doing that during training. Like, you could injure me, which affects the whole team, and he doesn't care. Once he gets into this mode, he's an animal. Try to interview that guy afterwards. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> he so nervous. Where is that animal gone? Mm -hmm. So, like I said, everybody has that persona held within them. Some people, uh, some people have, like, for example, if I use my, go back to myself, MVP can spread into your everyday life. Sometimes, because depending on how you how you've grown, but some because you've you get so much attention and th that feels more exciting. Being that guy feels more exciting than being your normal self. So you're like, okay, you spread into your everyday. And then, you know, we start to realize people are like, nah, I don't like this guy and so on and so forth. I've been fortunate to have just the people around me, the upbringing. And I definitely say martial arts is a big key for me. Just having respect, bowing to people, strangers, helping, you know, up and coming guys in the gym. Uh, come up as well as progressing forward. It was it was always a team a team effort. Just all these different things that I learned through martial arts kept me grounded as a person. So MVP stays when you know comes out when it's necessary and not doesn't spread into my everyday. Fortunately, not everybody has that. Um, but for the most part, people have a performance self and then have the like how they are. Wow. Thanks for explaining that to us, man. That's just like, it's like a Clark Kent. And Superman, yeah, literally. You know what I mean? It's literally it's like, that. You're just like, hi, yeah. you know, <laughs> uncle, 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 and then it's Yeah, da, da, da. it is literally <laughs> that. That's, that's, you know, that's the best way, best way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> Love that, man. No, just so present listening, bro. It's just amazing hearing that sort of stuff. So let's talk about the uh, fight you had with Kevin Holland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I really enjoyed that fight. <laughs> it just really made me appreciate what how much of a striker you are mm. you know then punches the spinning elbows man i don't know how you got that flexibility i can barely just do this your elbows are already over there <laughs> you know what i mean um and uh, yeah let's let's go through that fight because there was a time where he kind of i thought he got you mm. the way he locked you and then you i don't know what you did and you just got out of it like and it was like how do you someone's in their best position and you've just like 
come out of it? Like, t- let's talk about that fight. What did you? How did you pre- prepare for that fight going in? Again, I always try to just, um, I always see it as if I can be better than my previous self, than my opponent. I don't really care for my opponent. So, as much as I know, I'm a fan of Kevin Holland. And it was, I even when I was speaking, so I was speaking to, it was Hunter Campbell, who's like uh, a Dana White's right-hand man. He's the one running so much, man. He's he's an amazing guy, such a cool guy. He's the one that kind of signed me on. He's like, look, this is the partnership. You you need anything, you speak to me. You know, you got any ideas, speak to me. But when we was, when he was kind of initially had our meeting about signing to UFC, he was like, how do you see your run? I was like, put me in the deep end and see if I can swim. Literally, because there's no point in me wasting time. I've been in the game long enough. Uh, I don't need to be built up. I think people are aware of, you know, my talents if you're in that space and, and you know, what I've done. So it's not like boxing where some people say you've got ring rust, you need a warm-up fight once or two before you go up? Or I think everyone's, everyone's, everyone's different. Um, everyone's different. Some people feel the need. And I always say, if you believe something, then it's true. So if, as a fighter, I believe ring rust is a thing, then it's true. Me as a fighter, I don't believe in ring rust. Right. So if I'm out for two years, when I come back, if I if I'm going, if you, when you see me on the show, I've done the training that's necessary. I don't ring rust doesn't mean anything to me. So that's my belief. So that's that's the thing. So I literally like throw me in the deep end. And I had a feeling out of everybody because regardless, as 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 tough as everybody thinks they are, they're not stupid. They're you know smart fighters, shall I say? So there would have been a lot of people when my name got mentioned. They wouldn't have put their hand up to go to go first. Just because it's like, I've seen this guy as well. He just looks tricky. Let me see how somebody else deals with him. Because the question is, can he do it at top flight? Can he do it at the top level? All the fighters, they're like, I don't want to be the I don't want to be the one to f- find out if he can. <laughs> so, but I knew it'd be somebody like Kevin Holland that would be like, I'm game. Like, let's go. Let me try and find out what's going on. And that's why I think that's why everyone loves him, respects him, because he's yeah. he's he's just about it. He doesn't care. Yeah. Um before we even get to that point, Michael, yeah. how did the UFC deal come about? Like, you know, how did you come out of Bellator was your contract ending how do you broker a new deal like let's talk a little bit about business bro yeah so as I said my last Bellator fight now I'm actually free so Bellator will give you a certain time limit to for them to negotiate and this happens for all athletes which is why when your class is a free agent everyone's like why hasn't he now signed to somewhere else? It, it, things are not doesn't can't happen immediately. So Bellator, being the organization and a smart business, I guess they give themselves a certain amount of time, stress free, from nobody else. So you're not coming to me saying, "Yeah, well, these guys offered me this. These guys, all you have to deal with is me." So again, smart. So. I had to go through that phase, but I was already in the mindset of, I just want to be a free agent. I I don't think you guys value me the way I value myself. And what I mean is like financially speaking, you guys value me as an asset of the, the company, but your price tag to that is very different to my price tag to that. So I'm like, regardless, I'm going to be a free agent. So, but I let them know that early. I don't. I was just like letting him know that earlier, but then he's like, "Cool, I'm technically I'm free to just chill." I had to take my time, and every everyone's asking me questions. I'm like, I literally I'm, I'm handcuffed right now until a certain uh, period is triggered. Once that period was triggered, then you know everybody came. How did you get in touch with like Dana White? So, like I said, it, the the bare knuckle fight meant everyone got in touch with myself, okay, or my team. You know, how does um, that feel? Yeah, it's nice. Like again, it's just it shows that I'm a, I was as valued as I thought I should be valued. So then, when things was happening, I like yeah, my coach was laughing, just like because it just just worked out so perfectly, unintentionally, but it just worked out perfectly because everyone's like, "Yo, what's yo, what's going on?" Like like I said, they all came in, 
and um, I've got one, I've got the best manager in the world uh, in uh, Audi Atar. 